Happy Monday! I am so excited to be here with you all. It's been a long day today. For those of you that transitioned to daylight savings time, I don't know about you, but I find the older I get, the harder that transition becomes. And I am ready for bed already. And it's only 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, which is only 7 o'clock on our old time, but I'm wiped. I'm so tired. But I am here with you and we are going to craft. I have some St. Patrick's Day themed projects for you today. I've got my little leprechaun hats on in celebration. Um, we're part Irish here and well, really removed like an eighth Irish, but it's always been something that we've celebrated in the house and in my family. So I thought it would be fun to do up some projects that maybe you can share with your friends and families and you know anybody that maybe celebrates St. Patrick's Day COVID style this year. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna flip my camera. All right, hopefully the camera mic is picking up. So if you are watching, give me a thumbs up and let me know you can hear me. And don't forget to share when you share your videos or my videos, you're entered to win a draw for the projects that I made last week, which there were three if you joined me last week. Let me see if I can grab them. Well, I have two of the three with me. So I made this one here using the Hydrangea Haven uh, stamp set in celebration of International Women's Day last week. And then these super adorable little treat packages were another item I made using the beautiful Butterfly Bijou designer series paper, which is limited edition. And then the Hydrangea Haven 
um, stamps. And then there is a third card that I used, um, the Pretty Perennials, and I wanna say You Are Amazing was the stamps that I used. So those are going out and Cora is our lucky recipient this week. So Cora, those will be coming in the mail to you. So the first project I have tonight is actually one created with punches and I haven't done a punch art card in some time. So I was happy to play with this one and, and see what I could come up with. So here's what we're going to make. So it's a cute little shamrock and it's so easy. I mean, this would be one that you could actually do with your kids. And even if you didn't have a punch, if you just cut out hearts, it would be super easy to replicate. And then the greeting is from the ridiculously awesome stamp set. And really the stamp set is ridiculously awesome. So let me show you how we are going to create this. So our base is garden green and it is a eight and a half by five and a half piece of cardstock. We're gonna fold that in half and we're gonna burnish the edges. Give it a nice crisp fold. And we can go ahead and turn that around, make sure it's going to open the right way. Next, we have a piece of basic white and this measures four inches by five and a quarter inches. And that's going to get attached to the front of our card base but I wanna do my stamping first. So I'm going to move my base to the side and I am going to use Garden Green Ink to coordinate. Pull that out and let's get our stamp. So we're going to use the You Got This. I thought it was a good sentiment to use for um, St. Patty's Day themed card, you know, luck of the Irish and all of that. So we've got, you got this. We're going to ink that up. And then we're just going to stamp in the bottom right corner. And there we have our greeting. So now we can attach that right to the base and I'm just going to use my stamp and seal. And we can attach that right down. That should leave a nice eighth of an inch border all the way around because it was cut a quarter inch smaller. And like I, I like to flip it over and give it a good rub just in case the ink isn't quite dry, you're not going to risk smearing it. So now we can just put that to the side for a moment. And you're gonna pull in some scraps of garden green. And this is for our hearts. So with your punch, you're going to cut out three heart shapes. And again, if you don't have a heart punch, you can just freehand cut your hearts and it will work the same way. So there's two. And there's a third one. And then we wanna create a stem. So what I did for my stem is I just freehand cut this and I wanted it to be tapered, so larger on the bottom and then taper up. So I'm gonna use my paper snips and we're just going to cut a strip. And so I got slightly larger at the top there, so now I can decide which end I like better when I'm positioning this. Yeah, that's okay. And we're going to end up trimming it once we've got our details on. Your hearts are just gonna get layered over top. So what I'm doing is the pointy ends are going to come together on the two side pieces and then the top will come in and fit perfectly. And I think that might be too wide. So let's see if the other way is better. much better, I like that. So now we can trim off the end and we have our stem. And we're going to attach all of these pieces with Stampin' Dimensionals. But what I suggest is getting it laid out first so you know approximately where you want those pieces to fall and make sure that the stem isn't peeking out the other end. 
and I'm happy with that. So let's pull in our dimensionals, which of course I didn't have ready. So let me grab those. And we're gonna start with the stem. So I know that I've got my stem centered as far as best I can left to right. And it's in line with the e bottom of the O here. So that's where I'm going to position that stem. So I'm going to flip it over and apply my dimensionals. Peel off our backs. And so I'm looking at that bottom of the O and then I'm looking side to side and I'm happy with that placement. And now we're going to do our hearts. And with the hearts, because they're going to overlap the stem a little bit, I'm gonna pull that center dimensional back because I don't want it to pop up off the stem. And if you want that extra um, adhesion, just put a little dab of seal on the point and then it will fit perfectly on that for you. I'm going to come in right about there on the right. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So a little dab of seal on the point and then dimensionals. Hi, Nina. Hi, Michelle. How are you ladies adjusting to the time change? And you can see I came in a little too far with this heart. So to make up for that, I'm just going to overlap it so that I try to get the same distance on either side. And now we're going to come in with our top piece. And our seal once again. And there we have our cute little shamrock, which is so fun just like that. But of course, you know me and I like bling. So I'm gonna use the basic pearls and I'm gonna use the largest size with my take your pick tool. Michelle, I miss the hour too. <laughs> and I'm just gonna sprinkle some pearls on there. So I'm gonna put one right in the center of our shamrock and then we're gonna put some on the shamrock and then some off to the side of the shamrock. And yeah. So there we have, hi Cora. There we have our cute little shamrock card for St. Patrick's Day so easy. I love puncher and I don't do enough of it. So hopefully that's inspired you to use your punches to create something for St. Patrick's Day. Let's move on to our second project. I'm just going to clean my stamp because I know if I don't, I will stick my fist in it. Nina says the time change is not good for her little granddaughter. I bet, I remember when the kids were little and time changes were the devil. They just, they're not agreeable for little kids and I understand why there are a lot of places that have actually done away with changing time to daylight savings time. You know, it was originally created for farmers and while I'm sure the farmers still benefit, it really doesn't do well for the rest of the population. So our second card, we are going to use um, Daisy Lane. So this is from the annual catalog and we're going to use Smile. And this is another St. Patrick's Day themed card. I will be using the Hippo and Friends dies to create a label. So I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to use this one here. If I can get it out. I cut all my nails on the weekend. There we go. So it's really hard to grab things now. And we're going to stick with the white and green colors. So our base is basic white, eight and a half by five and a half. 
and fold it in half. Oh, and I realized I didn't show you the sample. Well, let's do that after I burnish the edges here. All right. I tried something new on this card and for a first try, I'm happy with it, but I know it's going to get better the more I do it. So this is a faux paper tearing technique. And the center here is actually just sponged, but it looks like it's got dimension and there's some torn paper in there. So I'm gonna show you how to create that. And then I've used embellishments to create the little four leaf clovers in white. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to be sponging right on the base. We're not using a layer on this one. Um, sorry, I stand corrected. We are using layer because we have garden green. So we can attach that right to the base. And then we have another piece of basic white that we are going to use. So our mat here of the gorgeous green is four inches by five and a quarter. And that fits perfectly on our card base that when folded becomes four and a quarter by five and a half. It is a standard A2 size card or quarter fold is another word that we use to describe it. So then we have basic weight once again, and this piece is three and three quarters by five. And we are going to put that down. You're gonna to wanna to have a scrap piece of paper to use. And if you have washi tape, I recommend pulling that out. And then you're gonna to wanna to have a scrap piece of paper that's just loose. And we are going to tear that paper in half, or you can tear it a couple of times. So you have a strip or two strips, whatever you would like. And we are going to use this to create our sponging. So what I want is for the seams on the tears to lay or line up as best as possible. And then we are going to position them on our basic white. And you can position them however you want, whether you want them on an angle, if you want them horizontal or vertical, if you want them to narrow at all. And I think I'm actually gonna change this up a little bit. And we're going to go like this. Yeah, let's see how this works. So I'm gonna use my washi tape here. This is an old retired washi tape. Just to hold these pieces of scrap paper down. I don't want them moving. So we're gonna do top and bottom. And before I put that other piece down, I'm actually gonna put a piece of washi on the basic white, just to hold it to the base so it's not sliding around as I'm sponging. I made that mistake last night and had to keep trying to line up my torn edges with what I had previously sponged. Let's try that. So we're gonna attach this. And for this one, I am using garden green and shaded spruce for my sponging. And you can use blending brushes if you have them. I am using sponge daubers because I don't have, my blending brushes are in blues and purples and I don't wanna mix the colors even though you can wash them. I just figure it's easier to keep them where they are. So I'm gonna start with the garden green. And if you have right anchor, this works as well but I am going to use my ink pad. And so these are our sponge daubers. You can also use our round sponges. And I'm just going to dab the dauber in the ink pad directly and then onto my scrap paper, just take off a little bit of the excess. And then coming in from the paper in a circular motion, we're just gonna sponge into that negative space. filling in the entire opening. And it's okay if you have a, a heavier hand in some sections than others. It creates some nice shading. Oh, you can see that cardstock is jumping around there. So I'm just gonna hold it a little bit tighter here. Now 
that. So I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to come in with the shaded spruce. And I, if I have to go back in with the garden green, I will. So same thing, shaded spruce. And I just, we have a label maker, so I put labels on my daubers. And that way I don't mix the colors. And then with the shaded spruce, I'm going to do the same thing. But I'm only going to come in around the edges. just to give the edges some dimension. And you see that's pretty heavy up there, so I will blend that out with the garden green, just to make it a little more even. And then I'm just gonna come across the top and the bottom, and then we're gonna blend it all out with some more of the garden green. Make sure we have the look that we are hoping to accomplish as I stick my dauber in the wrong color. This is why <laughs> I don't have multiple ink pads on the go usually. All right, let's try this again. So we're just gonna try and blend out that darker spruce. So it's not quite so harsh. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to close up this ink for a moment. And it is messy. My fingers are covered in the ink already. So now we can pull off our pieces of paper. And you can see it's got that nice frayed edge from the torn paper to give it that torn look, even though we haven't actually torn it. And I'm just carefully pulling off the washi tape from the cardstock. There we go. I'll hold that up so you can see hopefully a little bit better. Got those nice frayed edges. So I'm happy with that. And that can get attached right to your card base using your stamp and seal. And again, that should leave a nice eighth of an inch border because I cut it the quarter inch smaller and turn that over to give it a rub because those sponged inks are still wet. We don't want to smear them any more than necessary. So now we get to start playing with our embellishments and our greeting. So on a scrap of basic white, we're going to stamp our greeting in garden green. Once again, just tying all our colors together. And there's my smile. There's our greeting. And then we're going to cut that out using the die I pulled out from the Hippo and Friends dies. And I'm gonna pull in the Baby Boss. Oops, and a cutting plate that's stuck to it. I am just falling to pieces here. All right. Put that on the baby boss. Make sure it's centered as best as possible. Put our other plate on top and then we're gonna crank that through. And I can put the machine to the side. Stay there. cutting plates out of the way and there is our tag so we're gonna put this on the base with dimensionals and what I did when I was creating my samples I actually did the um, the little shamrocks first and then came in with the label 
and then I had to try and fit the label around what I had done. So we're going to put the label on first tonight. And I think, I think I'm still going to go somewhat centered here. So I like it there. So now we're going to come in with the um, resin hearts. So this is from the snail mail suite. And we're going to use these little resin hearts to create these little shamrocks in white. So I'm going to use my take your pick tool, get my putty all ready. And so each one of these uses four of these little shamrocks or four of the little hearts. And just like the other card, we're going to put them together tip to tip. And if you wanted, you could just do three and add a little drawn in tail, but I like four for the lucky four leaf clover. Push that in. So there's the first one. Look how cute is that? And we're gonna repeat the process. Tip to tip first. And then we're gonna come in with the tops and bottoms. And I picked the white, um, the white hearts for this because if you've ever looked at a shamrock plant, the, the leaves are green, but they have little white flowers on them. So I thought the white would be perfect for this. Does anybody do anything special for St. Patrick's Day? We have a traditional North American Irish meal of corned beef and cabbage. So I have my corned beef brisket, which we will cook most of the day and have hot corned beef sandwiches. And then for cabbage, because the kids don't like keep cooked cabbage, we'll just do coleslaw. And then I usually make a potato salad to go with it. And we've got um, St. Patrick's Day decorations up on the windows and mirrors and things throughout the house. And the kids will have green milk in their cereal or to drink throughout the day. And we'll just make the best of it. Here is the last and you can do as many or as little of these little flowers as you like. Um, the general rule of thumb is to do things in odd numbers as it's more visually appealing to the eye but if you only wanted four or you only had space for four depending on how you laid it out you could certainly do that and that's cute as it is but of course we need to add some sort of embellishment so in this case I'm going to use some ribbon and we don't have any garden green ribbon. So I'm going to make my own using the crinkle seam binding ribbon in white. Which I'm just cutting off there. So this is what I'm using. I love this ribbon, it's so versatile. And we don't have a gorgeous, or sorry, a garden green stamp and blend, which is what I would usually use. So I'm going to make my own by using a dark old olive and a dark shaded spruce. So I am going to start with the old olive here. And if you've never colored your own ribbons, this is one of the most awesome things you can do with this um, seam binding ribbon and stamp and blends is you can make any color ribbon you want to coordinate with your project. So if you're looking for a ribbon in a color that doesn't have a ribbon, you can make one as long as there is a stamp and blend, or even you can use your ink pad or re-inkers to do this as well. But I find the blends are the least messy of the bunch. So I'm using the brush tip and I'm just coloring over top of the ribbon. And because they are alcohol-based markers, they dry pretty quickly. 
but they are messy. You can see it's getting through all my scrap paper here. So you just want to make sure you have something underneath to protect your work surface. And we're just going to finish this up. And if it's still not the right shade, you can go back over it with the old olive. Just do a quick brush all of here. Make sure I've got the right color that I'm looking for. All right. So there we have our nice green ribbon. It's actually a little bit darker than the garden green, but it's pretty close. So now I'm just going to tie a bow. If you have a bow maker, you could certainly use that or just freehand it, which is what I'm doing here. Just play with your ends until you get them the right size for what you're looking for. And then pull it tight. Pop up your little bows. Then we're going to pull in our card and I'm going to use glue dots to attach this. So I'm going to put a glue dot right on the knot of the bow. And then because the glue dot's slightly bigger, I'm just going to use my fingers to kind of bunch it up underneath it. And that's going to go on the bottom of the tag underneath the smile. Give it a good push and then you can just use your paper snips to trim your tails to the desired length. And again, I always like to cut on an angle to avoid that fraying, but if you like it, um, if you like the frayed look by all means, or you could do little banner flag tails and that's cute too. But again, I want to tie in the white. So I am using white baker's twine. And this is also from the snail mail bundle. So I am just taking a length of the twine and I haven't pulled it off the spool. And again, I'm just gonna tie a knot, or sorry, a bow, just an overhand bow. Fiddle with your tails and your loops until you get them where you want. Snip off my end. And tying it like that, it just, it reduces the amount of waste you have rather than cutting off a length and then having a lot to pull away. We're going to use another glue dot here and you can see I'm just kind of rolling it because it, it's pretty big. So then we're going to use that on our baker's twine before we pull it off the backing and we're going to stick that right in the center of our green bow that we just created in the knot there. Give it a push and then again trim your tails to the desired length. And there we have our faux paper tearing St. Patty's Day inspired card. I like the technique and I think I will likely try it on some other cards using different colors and combinations. So stay tuned to my blog to see what I come up with. So here are the cards we made tonight. It's a short and sweet live because as I said at the start, I am super tired. Don't forget to share the video because I will be drawing next Monday night for the cards that we've made here today. And I thank you all so much for watching. Have a great night, everybody. Anything is possible. It started with a dream. Our passion made a difference and built a family. We've grown strong together. You know it's all because everybody plays a part in doing what we love.
sharing and the chance we have to give. You can do most anything, so just do what you love. Live it, share it, you know it's what you're dreaming of. Years of inspiration and love.